Welcome to our Office Hour webinar. Uh, if you're joining us today, we love to see where you're joining us from. Now, normally I ask you to find the chat box or the question box and type in there where you're joining us from. But let's try something a little different today. So if you will grab your smartphone, scan that QR code on the screen, it'll ask you to put a dot where you're joining from today. So I try to put my dot where Oklahoma City is. So I'm joining from Oklahoma today. And we would love to see on the screen where you are joining us from today as well. So we see some dots populating. If you're just joining us, scan that QR code. Add a dot where you're joining us from today. Um, I did this in a live PD session not too long ago, and it was really fun to see the dots start to populate as more people access um, the Mentimeter site. We're so glad you're here today. We'll get started in about four minutes. So in the meantime, share with us where you're joining us from. Seems like there's a lot in the Texas area. We have California. It looks like Rhode Island, North Carolina, New York, North Dakota, Hawaii. Welcome. So glad y'all are here today. If you're just jumping on the call, scan that QR code with your smartphone using the camera app. Then drop a dot where you're joining us from today. It looks like we've had Mississippi pop up as well. Welcome. So glad you're here. So if you are just joining, grab that smartphone, scan that QR code that you see on the screen, drop a dot where you are joining us from today. I know my location was not exact where Oklahoma City is, but we got the picture. We'll get started in about three minutes. We have a lot of people jumping on the call right now. If you are jumping on the call, like I said, grab your smartphone, use the camera app, scan that QR code that you see in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, and drop a dot where you're joining us from today. It's always fun to see where everyone's joining from across the country. Looks like we have New Jersey jumping on. I see a lot of our um, regular attendees name in the attendee list today. Glad y'all are here, glad you're joining us. We'll get started in about a minute and a half. Oh, looks like we have someone else from Oklahoma joining us. We also have some that have dropped it in the question box. So we have Utah, we have Connecticut. Welcome, glad y'all are here with us today. Looks like we have more from California, more from New York. Like I said, normally we'll, we put where we're joining from in the question box. Um, I used this a little bit while ago with um, in-person PD, and it was just fun to see the map populate with dots. So one more chance before we get started. If you'd like to share where you're joining from, grab your smartphone, use the camera app to scan the QR code in the bottom left-hand side of your screen, and try to drop a dot where you're joining from and then hit submit and it'll populate our map. We're glad you're here today. Like always, this is going to be a fast and furious 30 minutes. I see a lot of our regular attendees. We're so glad you chose to spend your afternoon with us as well. And with that, we're going to get started, y'all. So as you can see, we have attendees from across the nation joining us today. Glad you took time to join us. Welcome to five more instructional strategies. 
So if you remember, last year when we kicked off this office hour series, we did five instructional strategies. So this year we're gonna continue with five more instructional strategies. We're glad you're here. You know I like to get started right away before we do introductions. So here's the first task. Caption this. Look at this image. What do you see? Find the question box that's located in your control panel. Type your response in the question box. What would you caption this image if you had to? If you were writing a caption for this image, what would that caption be? Share with us in the question box. You can access it in your control panel using that orange rectangle with the white arrow. And then we'll start to share some of those responses. So there's some already coming in. Some of our captions are, let me tell you, staff meeting, corporate self pitch, taking a question, instructional time, standard meeting of people, staff meeting, sage on the stage, I hear ya. Some of our other captions include talking at you, look at this graph, how to be successful, openness to questions, traditional lecture or staff meeting, our monthly performance continues to improve, someone talking to a class. Absolutely. Those could all be captions to this image. So let's talk about this strategy. What is caption this? This is a strategy that invites learners to analyze images that could be related to a topic, then create a caption to demonstrate what they have learned about the topic. You know, you could also use it at the beginning of a lesson to kind of activate prior knowledge before you start adding new content or new knowledge, or you could use it at the end as a formative assessment. This type of strategy, it caption this, really helps learners make inferences, interpret data and information, evaluate, and also synthesize information. So you just completed the first of your five instructional strategies for today. Let's keep going. As my slide progresses. So with that, welcome to five more instructional strategies. Today, we're just gonna explore five strategies, and then you're gonna have a chance to say like, hey, this one would work in my classroom. This one might not work in my classroom. Also, my name is Mandy Green, Manager for Professional Development and Instructional Design here at Goodhart Wilcox. We are so glad you've chosen to join us today. As you may know, this PD session may be unlike any you've ever attended. They are highly interactive and collaborative in nature. So be ready to grab your smartphone so that you can interact with polls, surveys, and other activities. Are you ready? Okay, a few reminders before we get started. We will be recording this, and about 24 hours after the session is over, you will receive an email that has a recording of the session along with a certificate of attendance. You can also find the certificate of attendance in the handout section right now that you can go ahead and download and have it ready for you. Okay, let's keep going. Next one, first word, last word. So you're going to scan the QR code. So grab that trusty smartphone again. Then a box is gonna pop up and all you're going to do is type in a phrase to either describe, you could even define instructional practices. So scan the QR code, type a brief phrase that defines or describes instructional strategies and hit submit. And then we'll learn with and from each other how we describe and define instructional strategies as a group. So I'll give you just a couple of minutes uh, to complete this. When you scan that QR code, it will take you to Mentimeter, free ed tech tool. We're using the open response question type. As always, check with your IT department at your school or organization to make sure you can use it with students and it is works on your network. With that, let's jump in to see some of our definitions and descriptions of instructional strategies. So as it populates on the screen,
here we go. So this is what my students would say in the screen. Wait for it. Wait for it. Let's see if they're coming in. I feel like this happened last time we did this on this one. So one phrase. So since this is for some reason not working, you can also drop it in the question box. And some of you have already begun to do that. Instructional strategies are strategies that help with teaching. There are different ways to have students interact with content. You can use them with learning. And lots of different options. Oh, help with learning can be confusing. Uh, planned learning. So we have some responses coming in now. Uh, instructional strategies, uh, reaching all learners, groups working together. They involve students. So we have lots of different ways that we currently define instructional strategies. Uh, they're student specific, individually effective, uh, involve students. So we're starting to see some common words, crucial to ensure engagement, meeting course objectives, uh, high tech, high touch, classroom teaching and student methods of learning. So I don't know about you, but I'm seeing some themes. Learning is definitely one. Uh, another one just came in that's hands-on. Um, it involves their tools. They help teachers and students get information. So we're getting some of those same themes from all of our responses. So with that, let's jump back. So you're probably thinking, okay, so we just did first word, last word. Let's talk about first word, last word for a moment. So after we experience each of these strategies today, I'm gonna to stop and give just a brief explanation. Um, and we're gonna have a QR code. The QR code will take you to the University of Oklahoma's K-20 Learn site that has over 200 instructional strategies and other free resources for you as an educator. Feel free to scan that QR code. It'll take you to their website. But let's talk about first word, last word. Overall, this strategy is a formative assessment that really asks learners to create statements before and after instruction to show how they understand um, a topic and how their understanding has evolved or changed through the lesson. So we just did the first part called first word. And those are our first words that describe or define instructional strategies. We had a lot of learning, tools, content, teaching were some of our theme words. We'll come back at the end to complete the other half. That's our last word. So thinking about our themes of learning and tools with instructional strategies, let's dive a little deeper into what we currently know about instructional strategies. So next is ABC Graffiti. Once again, you're gonna scan the QR code. It's going to take you to a Padlet. And then once you get to that Padlet, you're going to see seven columns. Each column begins with a letter of the alphabet from A to G. And in each column, I'm going to ask you to click on the plus sign and then add a specific instructional strategy that you have used or heard of in the column that begins with that letter. So for example, this strategy that we're currently using is called ABC Graffiti. So I could click the plus sign on my Padlet and under the A column, I could type in ABC Graffiti as my example. You'll also find some additional examples that have already been added to that Padlet for you just to kind of spark your um, thoughts about instructional strategies. So with that, let's jump onto our Padlet. So you've scanned the QR code. I already see the um, different activities coming in and strategies on the Padlet. So let's share that so that we can learn with and from each other. So some of the strategies that we know of or have used that begin with the letter A include ABC Graffiti, acronyms, anchor charts. Then with B, we're finding bell ringers. Our caption this strategy did start um, our session off today. Also those DOK question stems, strategy that starts with the letter D. Uh, we have a bubble chart, absolutely. We have under E, we have emoji reflection. Let's see what else we have. Under F, we have the four C's critical thinking strategy. 
we have first word, last word, the Freyer model. Under G, we have give me five. I'll give you just about two more minutes to add any strategy that you have heard of, that you have used in your class, maybe some that you want to use in your class. Um, going back to A, we have alignment, of course, content, AB partners, teach, yep, acronyms. We have comment bubbles, chalk walk, that's great. Uh, we have fist of five under F. We have gallery walks under G. So have you heard of some of these strategies before? Are you curious to how to use some of these strategies? Before? Let's see. We have a lot coming in our C. A Cornell notes, yes, absolutely. When I was a high school counselor and we worked with AVID, AVID was all about the Cornell notes. Uh, demonstration, design thinking, uh, four corners for F, absolutely. All right, so you're kind of getting an idea of some strategies. We're now like, we started out with a brief description. Now we're really thinking about some of the strategies that we use or we want to use or have heard of in our class that start with the letters A through G. Now there are a million other strategies that begin with the letters H through Z. Uh, this is just to kind of give you an example, a sample of how the strategy ABC graffiti works. Now let's talk about the actual strategy ABC graffiti. So what is ABC graffiti? So this strategy is really a group brainstorming strategy, right? We just brainstormed all of these instructional strategies that we each have used or heard of that begin with the letters A through G. What's great about this strategy is it can be used to activate prior knowledge, kind of like we did today, but it can also be used to help make those connections to new content or new learning. What's great about it is it can be applied to any topic or content area and can be used with a wide variety of grade levels from elementary to adults. So it provides you a lot of options. Don't forget to scan that QR code if you want to link to the K20 Learn website that has over 200 strategies besides the five that we're talking about today on that website. So we have just completed three strategies out of five. You ready to keep going? We have two more. Now this next one is highly interactive, so get ready. So we're gonna do the Freyer model. This is also a graphic organizer. You're gonna scan the QR code to access a Google Jamboard using your smart, smartphone, or you can type that bit.ly into another tab on your laptop or computer. It's bit.ly forward slash five, and then capital M-I-S, and then Jamboard with a capital J. So when you open this tool, uh, you're going to see a white page, and you're going to add a sticky note just with your name. We're just gonna practice using the sticky note feature first. So when you open the um, Jamboard, you're gonna open the toolbar and it will either be located on the left side of your computer or if you're on a mobile device, it will be at the bottom. You're going to go to the sticky note icon and you're just going to type your, note on, your name on the sticky notes just to practice on the first page first, right? We gotta make sure we know how to use the tool before we engage with it in content. All right, let's go to our Jamboard. There it goes. Whoops. There it goes. All right. So I see lots of people, they have found the sticky note icon. The link is also in the chat if you need that. <clears throat> and you'll notice that you can change the color. So make sure you find the little sticky note icon over here. If you're on your mobile device, it's the bottom right. You'll click the plus sign. Because unfortunately, the pin does not work well with this activity. It works well with many others, but not this specific one. So you can change the color. You can move it around on the screen, however you want. All right, so make sure you're grabbing the sticky note here, this icon, add your name, 
Hit save, then hit cancel to dismiss the box. Okay, so it looks like we found some sticky notes. Now we're gonna do our activity. So at the top, you'll see there's some one of four frames is showing. You'll use the right arrow buttons. There are three frames here. They're all the same, they're all identical. You can pick the one you want to work on because you're an adult. All you're going to do is add a sticky note. So what are instructional strategies? I'm going to click the sticky note, type my definition, hit save, hit cancel, and move it to where I want it to be on that screen. You're gonna answer the four questions. The other ones are, why should I use instructional strategies? What is one instructional strategy we have discussed today? Which instructional strategies do you want to add to your teaching? Remember, there are four boards total. You can use whichever one you want. So let's see what some of our comments are using the sticky notes. I'm gonna delete mine to get it out of the way. Oh yes, and the, the images do move, but you got this. So some instructional strategies that have stuck out today, the first word, last word. Instructional strategies are used to reach as many students as possible. Instructional strategies to help make learning more interesting and more hands-on. Absolutely. Why should we use instructional strategies? As you can see, through this Jamboard, that's a collaborative whiteboard workspace it allows you to learn with and from others because you can see others' responses. There we go. First, last, there we go. So you as a participant can also click through this. All right, so we're gonna start reading some of these. What are instructional strategies? Strategies that we use to improve as individuals. They accommodate all students uh, to increase student learning, increase student engagement, their tools. Why should we use them? Um, engage students, feedback, engagement. Um, what is one strategy that we have discussed today? The Give Me Five was on that Padlet, ABC Graffiti, first word, last word. Uh, which strategy do you want to add to your teaching? First word, last word is popular, uh, pair share, the sticky note activity using the Freyer model. Absolutely. Let's see what some of our others say. What are instructional strategies? They support and differentiate learning. Uh, why should we use them to keep it fresh? Yep, always allowing students to interact with content in multiple ways, realizing that we all learn with different learning strategies. So we may have one strategy, learning style that we prefer, but in actuality, we learn from all learning styles. So instructional strategies can help us engage students in all those areas. Let's see, I think that's it. Um, show an image, what would you call this? Yeah, the caption, this kind of activity, absolutely. So hopefully through this interactive um, whiteboard that we structured as the Freyer model, kind of a graphic organizer, you're able to kind of see what are some instructional strategies, what are they, why should we use them, what's one that we've discussed today, what's one that you might want to add to your teaching toolbox or toolkit. So this allows us to learn with and from each other, just as it would allow your students, your learners, to learn with and from each other as well. All right, we only have 10 minutes left. Let's get, keep moving. <clears throat> so let's talk about the Freyer model. So this is a graphic organizer, yes, but it's a strategy that really allows students to graphically organize their prior knowledge about a concept into kind of like an operational definition, maybe a personal definition, and maybe other features or examples. You can also use the Freyer model to set up an example and non-example um, activity for different concepts, because sometimes those non-examples are more powerful than the actual examples of a concept. You can put anything in those four boxes, really. Anything that you want your students to focus on, anything that you want your students to really um, be able to differentiate can go in those four boxes. And the topic or your main content idea 
is what goes in the center of the Fringer model. There are many of these graphic organizers that you can find all over the internet by Googling uh, or searching Fringer model. There's a million out there. Okay, so let's start to wrap things up, reflect, summarize. Y'all know this is my favorite part. This is strategy number five. What did I learn today? You're gonna type what you learned today in the box. So here we go. In the question box, let me open mine. And share with us in the question box what you learned today during the webinar. So, uh, we learned about Jamboard and sticky notes. Glad you like that activity. It's highly interactive. I love those kind of activities like the Jamboard, the interactive whiteboards, because sometimes my quiet students, then their voice was able to be heard. Um, learned about Jam Jamboard, learned about uh, sticky notes. Yep, absolutely, Phil. Uh, Mike, caption this, absolutely. Uh, fun online interaction tools to use during formative assessments, right? Uh, no wrong answers, cooperating, uh, new technology to use. They learn what Jamboard is, oh, great. Uh, learned about caption this, learned about first word, last word, uh, more strategies to help engage and collaborate with students, right? Because all of these different instructional strategies just allow our students to interact with that content. Because we know from Dewey's research that the more ways students interact with content, learning increases. Um, they learn how to keep students engaged. A uh, great resource from the University of Oklahoma. Glad to share that with you, Lauren. I love free tools. Uh, they learned about a website that has more teaching strategies, a different way to use Padlet, use the ABC graffiti, right? So we use the Padlet as more of an interactive um, website, another interactive whiteboard. Uh, learned I should drink more coffee before attending one of these webinars. They are fast and furious. 30 minutes goes by really fast. Um, and they're really interactive. Uh, the link should be shared in the chat. Great, thanks for the feedback, Tracy. We've been using QR codes, but we can definitely make the links happen as well. Fast is right. So those are all things that you learned today. So as an instructor then, how does that help me? So using a strategy like, what did I learn today? It's really a reflective writing. I don't know about you, but my administrators always wanted more core content areas into our CTE elective classes, right? So this activity allows students to write. It's a reflective writing activity, but as the instructor, it helps me determine if my lesson met its intended learning goals. I can find out what stuck with my students or my learners. I can find out what I might need to reteach or focus on the next day. It provides so much information and it allows our students to write because sometimes writing helps students more than talking. It also gives a chance for everyone's voice to be heard and for everyone to have an opportunity to share their thoughts with the instructor. Now, as the instructor, it might take also a little vulnerability on our parts um, because sometimes what they learn might not have been what we our intended learning goal or target was. Um, so it might take a little vulnerability, a little um, compassion on our side to say like, hey, maybe I need to restructure that lesson, that activity. That's great. That's part of teaching and learning. Okay. So you know that we started one of our, our second one was first word, last word. And we've got to finish that last word. So once again, if you will scan that QR code and give me just a second, I'm going to give everyone a chance to scan the QR code. It's probably on the first word screen right now. Once I jump over there, I will switch it to the last word. So in the first word, you just had a phrase about instructional strategies. What do you currently know? What do you think about instructional strategies? That phrase is so hard to say sometimes. Now we're gonna put in the last word. So after we defined it as a group, after we talked about specific strategies we currently use that we also were sharing with others, after we kind of did the Freyer model to really look at like what it is, why should I use it, which one might I, what I, might I want to use, we're now gonna have our last word. So as I jump on the Mentimeter site as well, we're going to switch it to the last word. And so now you're going to be able to plug in a new description, phrase, 
about instructional strategies. So thinking about what we talked about today, let's see some of our strategies. Um, so we have quite a few coming in. So let's start at the bottom, learning methods, how you teach a topic so that all student learners understand, they're interactive, they reach all learners, educational demonstration, teaching tools to provide effective learning and student knowledge retention, go to teaching tools. Yep, there are go-to tools. Tools, I don't know about y'all, I tended to use the same three instructional strategies forever in my classroom as a teacher. And really once I started changing up my strategies and the ways that I let students interact with content, it kind of was refreshing as an instructor um, and it changed the way I taught quite a bit. Uh, yeah, they can be face-to-face, -face, virtual hybrid, uh, differential participation, some groups work working together, that's right. A lot of strategies will help you also divide students into different type of learning groups. Um, it'll provide ways to show, uh, for students to show what they know. There's so many different ways to use instructional strategies and I know we have three minutes left. We're gonna get through it. Thanks for hanging with me. Here we go. So that was first word, last word. And like I said, this is a formative assessment. So as an instructor, one more time, I can see how their understanding or knowledge changed throughout a lesson what they came in with, with their prior knowledge, what they knew before the content of the lesson versus what they're leaving that lesson with. So how did that uh, prior knowledge and new knowledge combine to create new understandings? I can see that in this type of activity, this first word, last word. So key takeaways. Um, all of our, key, our strategies are here on key takeaways. We started with caption this. It was just to let you experience it, start to think about instruction, what it looked like, uh, first word, last word, ABC graffiti, prayer model, what did I learn today? All the way through our sessions, that's what we did. Also, because I do work for Goodheart Wilcox, if you're interested in any of our textbook titles, scan the QR code, it'll take you to a free preview page where you can request a preview. Uh, we are the premier publisher for CTE and health education, professional development. If you have questions, feel free to send me an email um, we are more than happy to hook you up with free resources if you go to our website or um, any other type of uh, PD that we offer. We are super happy to help you with that. I'm actually dropping the link in the chat right now for the PD site as well. Feel free to check out our free resources. And with that, I'm going to say thank you for joining us. I know these are fast and furious 30 minutes. I appreciate your vulnerability and your willingness to participate. If you have questions, drop them in that question box. We're gonna hang out a couple more minutes. I'm gonna get all your questions answered. Don't forget in the handout section of your control panel, there are certificate of attendances. They will also be emailed out to the email address you use to register for this webinar. So feel free to get that. Uh, feel free to email me if you have any specific questions. I'm more than happy to reply back to you. I hope you had a great day. I hope you learned at least one new instructional strategy. And then we will see you in two weeks for five formative assessments to increase creativity in the classroom. So with that, I'm gonna answer questions. Thanks for joining us. Hope you have a great day and a great week. So we're getting some feedback. People do like the links, but some do like the QR codes. So we'll, we'll start doing both. Thanks for the feedback. Always appreciate that. Um, the web address for the K20 Learn site. Actually, Raquel, if you'll just Google K20 Learn, that website will be the first one that pops up because it's like one of those weird like learn.k20.ou email addresses. And if not, if you'll just email me, I'm happy to send you a direct link as well. Um, Laura, Allison, Tracy, Sarah, thanks for your kind words. John, thanks for your kind words. So glad y'all were here. It would not be the same if y'all were not on this call with us today. Um, Kathleen, glad it was helpful. Tim, see you in two weeks. Excited about that. Um, and with that, y'all, it is 2.30 on the dot. So have a great day, and we'll see you in two weeks.